Hey everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. Back with another set review, and this time it is for the last Bowman set of the year. It is Bowman's Best. Now I'm still sorting Bowman Draft, which just came out, but Bowman's Best is due to drop on the 23rd of December. And the question we're going to ask is, is this just full of fluff or is there actual stuff? So let's dig right in and get into this 2020 Bowman's Best Set Guide and Review. So the 2020 card season is winding down, but before it ends, one of the last big releases of the year, it is 2020 Bowman's Best, and this is the one cent sports cards official set guide and review and what we try to get to in all of these reviews is the exclusive sensational set rating if you have not watched one of these videos before here's what that is i break down each set that i review into 10 different categories everything from cost value artistic value we go over inserts and parallels the auto checklist you name it there's 10 different categories we give each one of those categories a score of one to ten then we add all of those scores together which brings us to our exclusive one cent sensational set rating now what that does is it allows us to see how good this set is and it allows us to stack this set up against all of the other sets that have been released in the 2020 card season. So how do we get to the one cent sensational set rating? Well, first we're gonna cover off on the set highlights for Bowman's Best. We'll go into all the different buying formats that you can get it in. We'll, I'll even show you what the key cards are and the cards that you should be chasing. We'll cover off on all the different parallels, inserts, and autos that you can get out of Bowman's Best. And then I'll even break it down into the different teams that you should be targeting if you're getting into breaks. I'm going to give you a couple sleepers. I'll give you what I think the team that's going to hold the most value is, what the best team overall uh, all is, which team has the most autos, you name it. It's going to be in there. And then I'll give you my opinion on who I think should be collecting this set, who I think should stay away from Bowman's Best, what the overall set positives and negatives are, and that's how we get to the one cent sensational set rating where we will give this set Bowman's Best a score, and then we will compare it to all of the other scores that we've given to a bunch of different other sets throughout the 2020 season. So without further ado, let's dig right in and go to the set highlights. Now, here's the first thing to know about Bowman's Best. It's basically a hybrid Bowman set that features the best of what was released in Bowman in 2020 and kind of combines that with Top's Finest, which came out way back in June or July. So it's a mix of like Tops and Bowman. It is a smaller checklist. It only has a 100 card base set checklist, which features 70 stars out of those you've got 25 that are rookies and it also features 30 prospects all of the cards are going to be on sweet chromium stock and the set is actually in its 18th year of production it was around in the 90s and into the early 2000s and then it came back around in 2015 and has been around ever since now, when we talk about the parallel rainbow that you can get out of Bowman's Best, it's going to be a nine color base set checklist parallel rainbow. Um, and it is a it, it is released in two mini boxes per hobby box. So each master box is going to have two mini boxes inside it, very much like Top's Finest did earlier this year. And within those boxes, you're going to find four total autos per master box. Now, the auto checklist does feature prospects, it features rookies, and it features veteran stars. There are a couple of Hall of Famers in some of the inserts and autos, but not too many of them. It is only available in a hobby format. It is not something you're going to find in retail. And for 2020, there are two new insert sets. There's the Franchise 2020 Die Cuts and the Decades Best Inserts. And the other thing to remember, even though it is a Bowman set, there are no first Bowman cards in this set. So the buying formats. Well, first, it's only available in hobby. 
Um, so you can get a hobby case. Each case comes with eight boxes. There's 12 packs per box. Um, and then there are five cards per pack. So that would be a total of 480 cards. The cost right now currently is sitting at around $1,625. So your cost per card, a little high, $3.39 per card. But what you do get out of that are 32 autos per case. You get 96 different refractors, eight atomic refractors, and there are five different case hits that you can get. You will get two 2000 Bowman's Best Franchise Favorite Atomic Refractors in a case, two Franchise 2020 die cuts with the inverse color parallels. We'll cover off on what that is later. And then we, you will also get one Power Producers Atomic Refractor as well. So pretty tough pulls, but if you get any of those in a case or even in a box, you're doing pretty well. Then the other thing you have um, is the hobby box format. That shouldn't say Super Jumbo. I copied and pasted from Bowman Draft. Shoot me later. But anyways, you can get a hobby box. Uh, that's going to have 12 packs in it, five cards per pack, 60 total cards. Current price on a box is running just above 200 bucks at $206.95. So your cost per card increases just a little bit to $3.45. And you're guaranteed to get four chrome autographs, 12 refractor parallels, one atomic refractor, and nine different inserts in a box. So what are the key cards for Bowman's Best? Well, first of all, we're going to cover off on the base. One, there is a Luis Robert rookie card. There's a Kyle Lewis rookie card. And then we get into some of the prospects. It is a Bowman set after all, so prospects are always going to be a focus. You've got Heston Kerstad. Um, you've got Robert Hassel. Um, Asa Lacey, Max Meyer, and Spencer Torkelson running out the base. Those were all very high draft picks in the 2020 MLB draft that happened back in June. With the parallels, autos, and inserts, there are the inverse color franchise 2020 die cuts that I just mentioned. Now, what those are will, uh, is there is a 2020 die cut insert, um, the franchise 2020, which features players um, on different teams, and they are kind of in a uh, prism format, but then with the inverse colors, which land one in six boxes, the colors are all switched out. So it's going to be a real cool looking card. You'll know it as soon as you see it. Um, and then there are dual autographs that you can pull out of Bowman's Best. There's only three different ones you can pull, but there is 25 of each and some, um, some parallels that you can get. The big one that you would be looking for is the Adley Rutschman Bobby Witt Jr. dual autograph. That card's going to carry a ton of value. And then you also have the franchise favorite inserts and autos. That features rookie cards, a couple Hall of Famers. I think Cal Ripken, Chipper Jones are in there. And of course, it features prospects. Then there's the power producer autos. That features rookie cards, Hall of Famers, and prospects. But a very, very good uh, subset checklist on that particular insert and the autos that come along with it. Then you also have the Decades Best insert, which is what you see over on the right. That was actually a fan, not a fave, a fan favorite, uh, favorite uh, voted subset. So some of the names you'll see in there are very popular names, obviously Jason Dominguez being among those. And finally, any of the low numbered refractors that you can get in this set, whether they're autoed or whether they are not autoed, uh, but the golds, your oranges, your reds, your superfractors, those are going to be highly sought after cards in the set as well. So those, those are going to be your key cards. The parallel rainbow, which you can see over at the right, this is the gold for Beau Bichette. Um, you've got nine different... Uh, You've got a nine color rainbow that you can chase. You've got the refractors, the atomic refractors, which fall in uh, one per box. You've got purple refractors numbered to 250, blue numbered to 150, green to 99. The golds are going to be to 50. Orange is to 25, red refractors to 10, and then finally a super fractor one of one for every card in the set. So, Covering off on the inserts, the first one we have is the Decades Best. It's got 10 cards. It's one in 18 packs. So not guaranteed that you even get one in a, uh, get one in every box. It lands about six per case. So a pretty tough pull, not too hard, but uh, might not find one in every box. It does come with a, a, an Atomic Refractor, Gold, and Super Fractor Parallel Rainbow. 
Then you've got the Franchise 2020 die cuts. There's going to be 30 cards in that set. They land one in four packs. And in the parallels for that are going to be the Atomic Refractor Gold and Super Fractor as well. Then you've got Franchise Favorites, which has been around in Bowman's Best for a long time. Um, you can see what it looks like over on the right. It's even using the old Bowman's Best uh, logo, which I think they were using all the way back in 2000. Um, still, I also has a parallel rainbow that you can see on screen. And you also have the power producers. That's going to have 20 cards in it, land one in six packs. And that is going to have the same parallel breakdown that all of the other inserts do. So now let's get into the autographs. The best of 2020 autos. These are going to be the most common autos that you find in the set. Um, there are 90 different cards that you can pull for that auto checklist. The parallels on that expand out a little bit compared to the inserts. You've got the blue to 150, the green to 99, gold to 50, atomic to 25, red to 10, a few printing plates and a super fractor. And you can see what that looks like over on the right. <laughs> then you've got the decade's best autos and that has only 10 cards in it each of them are numbered to 99 and the only parallel you can get is the super fractor one of one then you've got the dual autos which i mentioned earlier there's only three cards in that set each numbered to 25 with the parallels being atomic and super fractor we've got more autographs you've got the franchise 2020 die cut autos and that's what you see over on the right 16 cards in that set Parallels are going to be the gold, the atomic, and the super fractor. And don't forget, you can also get the inverse color franchise 2020 die cut auto. And that's one of the case hits that you can get. Then there's also the franchise favorites autos. Uh, there's 25 cards in that set with the gold, atomic, and super fractor parallel rainbow. The power producers are the last of the autographs that you can pull in this set. There's 15 cards in that subset, and there are Super Fractor one of ones available. So, fairly straightforward set, but as we look at it and we look at the different teams, what are the best teams that you can target in a break? What teams can you maybe steal for a little bit of a price? What teams are going to be sleepers? Well, let's cover off on that a little bit. The very first, right off the bat, I believe that the best team that you can buy, it may not end up being the most expensive team, but I think the best team you can buy is the Chicago White Sox. It's got five base cards. Um, they've got nine different autos, which is pretty high on the auto checklist. Five different inserts, but there are a ton of different Luis Robert autos that you can pull out of that. And then when you look at the checklist, there's also... Um, crochet that's in there and some other really nice names on the auto checklist and the base set checklist itself is still pretty good as well and the inserts obviously are going to be of robert and and so on and so forth and i think you even got andrew vaughn in there so the white Sox just top to bottom the checklist is really nice for the white Sox. definitely if you can get the white Sox in a random team break that's fantastic um, if you can find it for the right price it may not go as high as maybe the tigers or something like that but i do think the white Sox are going to do you real well i believe they're the best team in bowman's best if you're looking for the most autos, that is going to be the Dodgers. There are five base cards, but beware, none of those cards are prospect cards. They are all current stars. You've got Cody Bellinger, uh, Max Muncie, um, the, the, those players, but they do have 10 different autos that you can pull, and there are four different inserts for the Dodgers. Now, if you're looking for a solid choice... Probably an expensive choice because of some of the names that are on the checklist, but I believe the Baltimore Orioles are a solid choice to get in this set. You've, they've only got three base cards, but you uh, also get six autos that you can pull, and there are three different inserts. But when we talk about the base set and when we talk about the autos, um, you're talking about Adley Rutschman autos, you're talking about Heston Kerstad autos, so if you hit one of those, you've basically made your money back in the break immediately. Now, the team that's probably got the most value 
is going to be the Detroit Tigers. Three base cards, seven autos, four inserts. And what you're chasing there is obviously the Spencer Torkelson card. Spencer Torkelson's Bowman first card just came out. So this would be his second card that has come out on a Bowman slash Topps uh, manufacturing lineup. So Spencer Torkelson pulling a premium price right now, plus a lot of other good autos that you can pull out of there. So the Detroit Tigers probably going to hold the most value. But there are some sleeper teams that you may want to consider. My first one is going to be the Atlanta Braves. Now, they've only got three base cards, but keep in mind, the base set is only 100 cards total. They do have five autos and four inserts. Now, that doesn't sound like that much, but when you look at the autos, there are multiple Acuna Jr. autos that you can pull out of this set. And if you hit one of those, I believe an Acuna auto is just as valuable, if not more valuable, than some of these rookie and prospect autos that you are going to pull out of here. And I believe there are like four different Acuna Jr. autos that you can pull out of here. So the Atlanta Braves, you might be able to get them a little bit on the cheap. Um, they aren't one of the better teams in Bowman Draft, so people might be coming off of that a little bit and undervaluing the Braves. And if you can get them at the right price, definitely jump on it because if you hit one of those Acuna Jr. autos, you're in business. And then my other sleeper team is going to be the Cincinnati Reds. They've got four base cards, but a total of eight autos, which is pretty high compared to most of the teams in the set. And they've got eight different inserts. And who you're chasing is going to be the Austin Hendrick card. Austin Hendrick, I believe, was the 12th pick overall in the draft, um, is a kind of is a kind of polarizing um, a prospect. A lot of people think he's going to be great. Other people think he might be a bust, but his cards and the hobby, he's definitely being paid attention to there. And if you can pull one of those, that card's going to hold a ton of value, but it's a little bit of a sleeper pick and the volume of the amount of cards you could get in a break going to be real nice. So who should be collecting Bowman's best? Well, obviously auto collectors. Um, you've got four autos per box, which gets you to a, a cost per auto of just above 50 bucks, which for a Bowman branded product is pretty good. Um, it's kind of a, it's almost like a value price for a Bowman auto. Um, you've also got pros uh, the prospect chasers. If you are looking for prospects, it's a Bowman set. Um, there are a ton of the 2020 first round picks in there. Most of the picks, uh, most of the 30 prospects, I would say, that are featured in this set, I would say 20 of them are from the draft this year. So um, some of the names are real big. And you've also got like Wander, you've got Adley in there. You've got some of the bigger names from past drafts. Um, and then if you like shiny things, Look, all of these are Chromium stock cards. They are beautiful cards. Uh, the parallels are real nice. Um, very nice card stock. So if you like shiny things, this is definitely a set you sh should consider. And if you're an individual card hunter, which more and more, I believe this is where the hobby is headed. Um, you can buy a box of this for $206, or you can pick the cards that you would like out of the set and try and find those on the secondary market. And I believe that many of the individual prospect cards are going to be priced fairly well on this set after the release hype. So it might not be something that you start looking for on Christmas day, but as you get into January and the hype dies down on Bowman's best a little bit, you can probably find these cards, especially in the off season um, at a, a, at a bargain price. And some of them could be very big names and very valuable later on down the line. Then if you're a case breaker, this is a fantastic case break. Um, it's a really fun case to break. There's multiple hits. I mean, you're talking oh, a ton of autos, um, a ton of different parallel cards that you're going to get in this set. So if you're a case breaker, definitely a, uh, a set that you should consider. And I also think that budget collectors who want Bowman branded product, um, a lot of the Bowman sets took off this year and uh, priced out a lot of people. However, Bowman's Best, still a very popular set. And although the entry point is around 200 bucks on this, um, I believe that buying into breaks is going to be fairly inexpensive. And I do believe that if you're a budget collector, if you drop $200 on this set, it's a pretty solid set. So I don't think that you're going to go wrong. And you've got that Bowman name on it, which carries value. So if you're a budget collector looking for Bowman cards, this is a great set for you to be looking at. But there's also people who shouldn't be collecting. 
First of all, and most obvious, are going to be retail collectors. There is no retail options, but beware, there have been some in the past for Bowman's Best, so don't be surprised if Top somehow brings this into a, refill, a retail format and surprises some of us. I don't think that'll happen, but it could. Um, also, if you are a um, Bowman flagship enthusiast, the one thing to keep in mind, I mentioned it earlier, but there are no first Bowman cards in this set. This set is a little bit more value oriented, so they purposely exclude some of those first Bowman cards and leave it for the flagship Bowman sets. Um, so there are no first Bowmans. However, you can still get cards from people that were drafted in the 2020 draft. Um, and if you're a relic lover, unfortunately with Bowman, Bowman, for whatever reason, doesn't like relics, and they don't put relics into many of their sets, so no relics in Bowman's best this time. And if you're a set collector, I just don't believe that this is a fantastic set to collect um, front to back. Um, some people collect it, but it is a small checklist. It's only 100 cards. Um, for team sets, there's a lot of gaps. Some teams only have two, three, four cards. Um, some teams... Uh, so it's just not a great representation of Major League Ball Club rosters. So I think there's much better sets that you can collect out of here. And it would be kind of expensive to get the whole set. So I would steer clear. And finally, if you're a traditional collector, um, if you like like Topps Flagship and stuff like that, if you like uh, Allen and Ginter or Heritage, these are uh, this is probably a set you want to stay away from. There's not it's not a photography driven set. It uses that high design, um, a, a lot of graphic art. It's got a lot of modern flair to it. It's designed that way because it's also kind of designed off of Topps Finest. So if you're a traditional collector, you like Topps Flagship, probably one that you want to stay away from. So that brings us to our uh, positives of the set. Very first thing to mention on that is going to be the prospect checklist has a ton of good names on it. I mentioned it earlier. You've got Wander. You've got Adley. You've got Torkelson. You've got Lacey. You've got Hassel. There's a lot of good names, a lot of new draftees that are in the set. So very good there. Um, the auto checklist, a fantastic auto checklist. It is strong throughout. You've got a bunch of major league stars, everyone from like Mike Trout to Acuna to some of your bigger names that are in baseball today. Uh, it mixes in some of the prospects, mixes in a lot of the rookies that you've been chasing all season. And um, I do believe that there's not a ton of filler on the auto checklist. The other thing is the card stock for Bowman's Best is a very nice card stock. They're beautiful cards. If you liked Topps Finest earlier this year, you're going to like Bowman's Best. They're very similar in the way that they are printed. Some of the nicest cards that you can get from a Topps slash Bowman um, lineup. And then because it is an, uh, a hobby-only format, uh, and the production run on Bowman's Best is lower than the flagship Bowman sets, I think that's a positive because some of these cards are not printed in as high as quality, so they're a little bit in more demand later on down the line. And I do like the inserts for Bowman's Best. They bring back some of the nostalgia. Um, you can see over there on the right with the franchise favorites, kind of pulling some of the some of the uh, nostalgic sets that you would have got, you know, 20 years ago or something like that. And some of the new additions, especially with the die cuts, really cool. Um, Really cool designs there. So the inserts, a very nice addition to Bowman's Best. I believe they're an improvement over 2019. Finally, you have a low cost per auto. The $50 um, auto from a Bowman product is pretty rare. And even with the inflated prices that the card at the hobby is seeing right now, $50 for a Bowman product auto, pretty good value overall. So I do like that we've got a low cost per auto. But there are some negatives to Bowman's best as well for 2020. And that is going to be the first thing is it does not hold the same value as Bowman flagship. Uh, Bowman draft, Bowman baseball, those are going to hold a little bit more value because they do have the first Bowman cards in it. Um, and the demand for Bowman's Best is not nearly as high as the flagship Bowman product. So if you're expecting to get the same price for a Torkelson from Bowman's Best, um, that's pipe dream, not going to happen. Second, there are a few holes in the rookie checklist that make this uh, that make the checklist feel a little bit stale. Uh, you've got 
No Devin Williams. He was the rookie of the year. He is not in this set, which surprises me, especially being that we're all the way out in December. Uh, no Randy Orozarena, uh, um, which, you know, with his postseason su- success, you would have thought that maybe he would be in there. He was on a major league roster, but you're not going to find him in this set either. You have pretty much a lot of the same stuff that you would have found in top series one and top series two. So it feels a little bit stale to me. Um, And I don't like that there's no relics. I believe this is a set you could totally do relics with, but they did not do them. Um, And then I also think that the set checklist, being that it's 70 uh, current stars and rookies and 30 prospects, I feel like they could expand that to like 120 or maybe 150. It just feels a little small to me. Um, Finally, I think that this set screams. I get that it's been around for 18 years. But I feel like they Tops could rebrand this set and call it Bowman Chrome Update because it feels a lot like Bowman Chrome, which comes out in between the two Bowman Baseball and Bowman Draft. It feels a lot like that set with the mix of the current stars, the rookies and young stars in the league, plus prospects and no Bowman, uh, no first Bowman cards. I feel like they could call it Update and get some of those later season uh, stars or um, and some of those prospects that weren't in there, maybe throw a few first Bowmans. It would be an awesome set. I think it would be in high demand, and it could actually replace Bowman's Best and be a better, a little bit more appealing set that maybe even held a little bit more value. But overall, Bowman's Best, a pretty solid set. So let's find out how solid. Where does Bowman's Best rank on the one cent sensational set rating? Well, like I said at the beginning of this video, uh, we break it down into 10 different categories. Appeal, base checklist, inserts, parallels, variations, the auto checklist, the pack odds and production, card quality, historical value, artistic value, and cost value. So with appeal, um, I don't think this has as much appeal as Bowman uh, flagship product does, uh, but because it is the chromium stock, because um, it is a Bowman product, it still is pretty sought after. It's a popular set. There's a reason why it's been produced for 18 years. Um, So overall, I give that a 7.5. The base checklist, I mentioned it in the negatives. There's, it feels stale this year. There are not a ton of like late season rookies in there. Um, the prospect checklist is fine. It's more of those 70 cards in the base set checklist that I think uh, feel a lot like top series two or maybe like a, like uh, tops Chrome. It feels like it was something that was produced much earlier this year and they didn't get some of those late uh, cards in there. So I'm only going to go ahead and give that a 6.5. The prospects kind of, kind of help that out a little bit without the prospect cards. It would have been even lower. Uh, the inserts solid insert lineup for Bowman's best. I'm going to go ahead and give that a seven. For the parallels and variations, I'm also going to give give it a 7. There are no variations, but you do have a solid 9-color rainbow. Um, they will be beautiful cards when you pull them. So solid there. I'll go ahead and give it a 7. The auto checklist is very good in Bowman's Best. I think it's probably the biggest highlight of Bowman's Best. Not a lot of filler names in there. They are stars. They are rookies. They are prospects. Um, so I go ahead and give that an 8.5. Would have liked to have seen some of those late season people in there, like a Devin Williams auto would have been fantastic. Uh, we have yet to get a Topps of Devin Williams auto. This product probably could have had one. Um, and then when we talk about pack odds and production, the production on Bowman's Best is generally the lowest out of all the Bowman produced sets. It's a hobby only um, product. So I'm going to go ahead and give that an eight. The card quality, fantastic card quality for a $200 a box set. I'm going to go ahead and give that a nine. Historical value, we dropped that down a little bit. Doesn't hold the value that Bowman uh, that, that the flagship Bowman does, like Bowman Draft or something like that. But it is a Bowman product. Um, and because they are beautiful cards and some of the parallels, I'll go ahead and give it a seven. Artistic value, the design on these cards is fantastic. Love that they did the fan favorite voting for the decade's best insert where they have the flags. There's a lot of there's a lot of thought that kind of went into that. And some of the cards uh, have a very beautiful feel. The it, the inverse color on the die cut, that's really cool. Uh, so I'll, I'll go ahead and give it a seven. And for cost value, I give it an eight. Um, and the reason why, four Bowman autos, 
um, out of a $200 box. That's pretty good. The cost per auto really saves that. They these cards do hold value. Uh, maybe not quite as much as you know the Bowman st uh, flagship stuff, but they still do hold value. Um, they are chromium cards. So overall, I, I think it's pretty good. I go ahead and give that an eight. So here's how we add all these up. We're going to take all of those scores. We're going to give it a rating between zero and a hundred. And as you can see over on the left, what you've got is a one to five star set. So if you land kind of in that two, uh, that's pretty tough. Uh, we've had a few two star sets this year. Um, if you land in three, that's a solid set. That's one that you may want to consider depending on what you collect. Um, four star set uh, means it's a very good set. It is a set that I would recommend most collectors to buy into um, and to at least explore and dabble in and get some of the cards that you might want to get out of there, however it is you collect. And then a five star set is a must have set. Go out, you know, drop the bank account a little bit, get as many of those cards as you can, because I think it'll be one of those historic sets that years from now, people go on and say, man, that was a really cool set. So where does Bowman's Best land on the one cent sensation, a sensational set rating? Well, I give it a score of 75. So it is a solid, solid four star set. Um, a few things missing in the base set checklist, but the auto checklist is fantastic. The prospect checklist is very strong. The inserts are nice. Um, I love the fact that you've got a $50 auto, um, cost per auto in there. It's a great set to break. It's going to be a fairly inexpensive set to buy into breaks. Overall, I think it offers a lot for collectors. And I do think that people are going to be opening this stuff and get, and having a lot of smiles on their faces as they do it. So how does Bowman's Best rank compared to all of the other sets that have come out in the 20? 20 card season well out of 62 different sets in 2020 major sets there's actually even more than that but this would be major releases uh bowman's best lands as fifth overall right behind bowman chrome and right ahead of top's gypsy queen top's finest which this set is kind of a hybrid of is the one that fell out of the top 10. Um, so our top 10, and we only have one big set to go, which is heritage high number. Um, our top 10 is, fi is finally starting to take shape here. Bowman draft, which was just released a couple weeks ago, that sits at the top perch at 83.5. Then you've got Bowman baseball, which was released back in June tops. Chrome, Bowman Chrome and now Bowman's Best. So Bowman dominating, as would be expected, Bowman is probably the most sought after name in baseball card collecting. So as would be expected, you've got Bowman dominating the top five, but we do have a few surprises in the top 10 where you've got Topps Gypsy Queen up there. I still think that was the surprise set of the year, a very solid set. Um, and then we've got a couple Panini products in there. Panini Select, a great set. Panini Prism, which for whatever reason is not getting as much hobby loves, love as it should, is a great set. Go look at that review and you'll find out why. You've got Top Stadium Club in there. And finally, Bowman Sterling rounding out the top 10. So we've got five different Bowman products in the top 10. So with that, guys... Comment below. Let me know what you think about Bowman's Best. If you're getting in, if you think that I am way off base, I would love to hear it. Um, if you think that this is a great set, I would love to hear your thoughts on why you think it is. And if you like these videos, be sure to throw over to, uh, throw over to first and hit that like button for me and hit that bell. So you can be the first to get these set reviews. So you're so you are locked and loaded on when these sets come out. So you know everything you need to know about the set. So you know what prices should be. You know what teams you should be buying into. We do these videos all the time. We're going to carry it over into the 2021 card collecting season. Um, and here real soon, I'm going to do my 2020 wrap up of the card season where we, where we will celebrate all of the highs and the lows of the collecting season. It's going to be a great video. So stay tuned for that. 
we also do breaks on the channel. We got a Patreon page. If you go over to there, that's how to get into all my different breaks. Got a great group of people in that uh, community that do a ton of collecting. There's a Discord channel you get invited to where you can talk with other collectors, buy, sell, sell, trade, you name it. A fantastic thing. Check out my Patreon. There's a link in the video description below for that. And with that, guys, I am going to sign off. I hope you have great luck on your pack pulls of Bowman's Best. And in the meantime, be good to your family, be good to your friends, be good to your neighbors. And until next time, take care.